Hello everyone and welcome to the 44th Coco Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how we can use sorting in our NS table view. So you might have already seen that we were able to sort the columns before uh, when we were using bindings but this tutorial is really going to uh, dig into pretty much all the depths that you really need to know about sorting. So when you're done this tutorial you should understand just about everything there is to know about sorting and NS table view, which is good. So um, this tutorial, as you can see, is already kind of half developed. And I do this kind of a lot for uh, the bindings tutorials. If you notice, um, anytime there's an NS table view with bindings, I don't like to go through the whole setup. So usually I just go ahead and set it up. Now, um, if you haven't watched the tutorial on NS table view with bindings, make sure you do that. And this is basically an exact replica of that, uh, the same concepts anyway, and you just have to recreate an NS table view with bindings with an add and remove button. So I'll run through this quickly anyway, but um, you know this at this point, if you've been following along, you should be able to create an NS table view with bindings uh, by heart. So um, what we have here, simply we added a new class and it's just a person class has a name and an age and like so and then in the init method for this we have the uh, simply we're assigning name something and age something just some default values so that's again what we have in our implementation and that's what we have in our header then uh, I'm not using an app controller for this uh, or not making a separate class this the app delegate is going to act as my controller but I'm just going to keep it simple and just use the app delegate class for my uh, controller needs. So anyway, what we've done here is we've simply added a uh, new NS mutable array, which is going to hold all the people that we have. So it's going to have the list of people. Then uh, I also have a IB outlet here just to my NS table view. And as you can see, it's just a weak, uh, weak property. Okay. Uh, now on to the main menu nib, we have our add, or I'll talk about that later, we have our uh, array controller here, and it simply has the class of person, and there's the keys of name and age, which are the two property names that are in the person, this is how the NS mutable array, or sorry, the NS array controller can uh, change the values in the person class by using these keys. Then, of course, we have to tell the array controller all the content that it's going to hold. So that's in the content array binding section. We bind that to the app delegate. We bind it to the uh, people NS mutable array that we have in the app delegate. That's uh, going to serve as the content that it holds. Then, of course, we have to say for the column itself that we're going to bind this column to the array controller. We're going to get the objects in the array controller and find all the ones that have the name uh, value, basically. So the name key is what we're looking up, and we're going to display all the names of the people from our objects. And same goes for the age. So that's that. And lastly, we have our buttons, which are just bound to the array controller. There's the add button, and there's the remove. So anyway, that's really all we have set up for this tutorial. And again, if you don't go, if you didn't understand that, make sure you just watch the NS Table View tutorial with bindings. All right. So now that we have that, all I really have to do is explain how we sort stuff. So by default, we already get some sorting behavior, but mind you, it's really not user friendly at all. Which is our goal in this tutorial is to make it user friendly. So. Uh, there's a few issues to note here. Uh, one of them that I'm going to start out with is that we don't actually have a default sorting. So when I just go to type something in, you know, type something new like that, then this doesn't sort correctly, and I have to hit the you know sort button to actually get it to sort. Another issue that we can see right away is that this Bob. Uh, let me show another better example. Change this to cat and I sort like that and as you can see Bob even though it should come before the cat uh, you know in the alphabet it comes after the cat because cat starts with a capital letter and so the way this is comparing all the names is kind of wrong to the user right because we're basically saying that capital letters are coming before lowercase letters and to people that use computers they don't really they would never think oh yeah my big capital letters come before the little ones no you just think that in the alphabet 
bob comes before cat so that or in the I mean you know what i mean b comes before c so that's another issue obviously with this is that our we are comparing all the strings case sensitively so we want to compare them case insensitively which means that we are kind of ignoring the case all right so let's fix the problem though of uh, not resorting this when we type uh, a value so we'll sort that or we'll fix that easily by going to our array controller and under the attributes inspector here we just have to select this checkbox auto rearrange content and this is uh, a great feature. Basically what it means is that anytime we edit a value or add a value, the table will be rearranged. So um, that's awesome because that's what we want. So as you can see here, when we run this now, I'm gonna say we wanna sort this. I change this to Ron. And as you can see now, Ron goes to the end of the list right away as soon as I hit return, which is exactly how we expect this to work. So uh, that's good, that's one fix out of the way, but of course we still have this issue where these lower cases are going after uh, the big cases. And of course, uh, this example isn't really good, but uh, if I was to change this to Cobb and this to Bob, as you can see, we still have that issue where the B is coming after the C, which doesn't really make sense. So to fix that issue, we have to change the way we're actually sorting the strings in this column. So to do that, we can select the column like that. You just have to select once, select twice, select three times, then you'll get the column. And what we want to do here is go to the attributes inspector and you'll see two different things that are really important to us, which is the sort key and the selector. Now the sort key, uh, you basically specify what you want to sort. So in this case, we want to sort the names, obviously. So we're gonna say the sort key is name. And that just means that that's what we're sorting. We're sorting the names. So with that, um, the issue here is that uh, we're using this compare method. And what this is basically doing, if you're wondering what this compare method is, is since all the values in our name section here are strings, it's just going to use the compare method for strings. Now, the compare method for strings is case sensitive, which means that as soon as it, uh, it does that thing with what I was just kind of showing you is that capital letters always come before lowercase letters. And to normal people, that doesn't really make sense. So we want to have a way that we can ignore the case. We want a case insensitive compare. So to do that, we just change the method that we're going to use for uh, to sort the names, basically, or to sort these strings. So this method is in the NS string class. You can look it up. Uh, it's case insensitive, insensitive compare, like so. And so uh, just in case you forgot, a selector is basically just some kind of method in Objective-C. So that's what uh, that's what I mean when I'm talking about these methods. So Basically, what this is going to do is it's going to compare all the names or all the strings with this method, case insensitive compare. And that means now we should be able to sort these values with um, ignoring the case. So the capital letters shouldn't matter anymore. So if I go ahead and run this and I add a bunch of things, and let's see, I'll change one to Ron. And oops, we still have our, of course, issue there with not having uh, the sort that, or not having a default sort selected. Then if I change this to Bob, and it doesn't really move anywhere, which is what we wanted. Uh, but uh, let's just show a better example here, Cobb and Bob. And as you can see, Bob is no longer going after the C. So as you can see, because we changed the uh, way we're sorting these keys, we're using the case insensitive compare method. Now uh, we're simply, uh, it, this makes our lives much easier, and we can just, you know, now compare these strings um, case insensitively, which is cool. So um, there's even a little more flexibility with this if we want to expand on this a little bit. If we wanted to get, say, the length of, uh, let's we want to compare all the lengths of the strings. Uh, we could say name.length, and this would call the length method on the string. And uh, to compare lengths, we just want to use the compare method, like so. 
and we can go ahead and test this out. So uh, this what this should do is it should sort our list uh, depending on the length of the string. So if I said cas, of course I gotta sort it, and bass, and bow, and as you can see, we are now sorting the strings depending on their length. So that's another kind of neat thing that you can do with um, the section over here, is you just pass the key that we're gonna use to sort the values. So in this case, we're getting the name, and then we're finding the lengths of all these names, and then we're comparing all the lengths, and that will figure out, of course, uh, what comes first. All right, so anyway, I'm just gonna flip this back to what we had before. And actually, I'm just going to get rid of all this because it's not going to matter in about two seconds anyway. So um, I'm just going to get rid of that and uh, I'm going to show you the much more advanced way that we can uh, go about this as well. So I didn't really uh, talk about sorting age as well. That's just because they're numbers, so there's not really any other way of sorting numbers that I can think of. But uh, anyway, that's always an option, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's that. And uh, so we just got rid of this sort uh, descriptor on the side here. And now I'm gonna show you a way that we can programmatically set an initial way to sort these values. So this is useful, for example, uh, let's imagine that you're using iTunes, right? And you sort your list of songs in the order of the song name. And then you quit iTunes and you come back and then it's not sorted anymore. And then you would be like, why? Why didn't you sort it? And that would be, uh, really sad. So we want to have some kind of initial way that we can sort values. And of course you could, you know, save this uh, using NS user defaults or something and then restore it. But anyway, uh, that's not really the point. The point is, is that there is a way to initially set this up. So what we want to do is uh, we could do this in application did finish launching. It doesn't really matter, but we want to set the NS table views sort descriptors. So we can do this by saying table view, set sort descriptors, and set sort descriptors takes an NS array of sort descriptors. So uh, what we can do here is we can make our uh, array, and what we wanna do is pass in some sort descriptors. So uh, we'll say NS sort descriptor, and sort descriptor with key. And I'm actually gonna show you, uh, there's a few different methods we can use for this. So we can use a sort descriptor with key, just like that. And we can also use uh, this one that passes in a selector. Now I'm gonna use this one, just to quick show you. And as you can see, this is set up very similarly to what we were just doing. So we were just sorting those columns using the key and we were saying that we wanted to sort it with a specific selector, right? We were saying compare or case insensitive compare. And so what we wanna do is we wanna sort the name. Ascending is yes, and that's basically just, you always wanna have it as yes or else you'd probably just confuse your users. But anyway, uh, that's the default on uh, the arrow pointy thing that uh, happens when you're sorting values. So just leave it as yes, and you can change it to no if you want to figure out how that works. But anyway, um, for the selector, what we want to call is we say at sign selector to obviously define a selector. And we want to say case insensitive compare, like so. And so we could leave it like that if we wanted to. And this is rather confusing, but uh, anyway, I guess I'll just leave it as that. But anyway, uh, that is sort of what we have for our table view. So what does this do? Well, an NS sort descriptor works the exact same way as our uh, thing that we were just doing with the column. So to the column, we were basically just saying, here's a sort descriptor for you. We're gonna sort the name and you're gonna case insensitively compare. So that's what we basically did previously in uh, the uh, nib, but now we wanna have a way of doing this programmatically. And I will show you that this works the same way. So if we go ahead and build and run this, add a bunch of stuff, and I say, uh, oh, now I should back out of that. A uh, very important thing about this though is that we are creating a default value for this um, application. So now you can see when I start this application, right, we're already sorting by name. And that's because I'm telling my table view, hey, here is your sort descriptors, 
and use this. So it's already preparing for me how it's going to sort the columns, which is really nice because that means I don't have to select it when I uh, you know start my application, which is usually what we want. So there we go. Uh, you know everything's working as should. And there we go. You can see it all works nicely with our case insensitive compare. Now, what if I have a duplicate, right? Let's say I have a bunch of bobs or something and I throw in a 41. Now, let's say I wanted to sort this so that, um, you know, if I have the same values on the left, that it will sort um, also by the age. So like the secondary sort uh, pattern for when there's a duplicate is to sort the age. So uh, since I have three bobs here, let's say I want the bob with you know to sort from the youngest to the oldest. So I can pass in another sort descriptor so that uh, if there's any duplicates like there is here, it'll know, hey, I'll go and uh, check to see if I can sort the ages as well to make it more useful for the user, right? So how do we do this? Well, we just passed in another sort descriptor, which is pretty awesome. So I just have to add a new object here and we'll make this another and a sort descriptor, sort descriptor with key. And we're going to compare the age and ascending yes. And I didn't actually want the selector for this one because we're just comparing the age and that's kind of irrelevant. It's kind of hard to read this, but anyway. Um, so the NS sort descriptor, now we're going to compare the age and ascending yes. Uh, the selector by default just uses compare, so uh, we're just going to compare the numbers, right? All right, so that is basically what we have for this. Pretty simple, and you might be wondering, okay, we have these two sorting things now. What does that mean? Well, it's pretty simple. Basically, what this means is that we're using our name first, so when it's uh, sorting by uh, the name, it's going to say, hey, I want to sort my name using this uh, case insensitive compare. And then if there's some duplicates, it's going to go to the next sort descriptor and use that. So it's gonna, then going to look at age, and it's going to say, uh, how can I sort these ages, you know, and I'm going to sort them ascending yes, which means youngest to oldest. So that's what we want. Now, um, another cool thing about this is that if I was sorting by age, it'll also do the reverse. So if I was sorting by age, then it'll, if there's ages that are the same, it will also sort them by the name. So if I have duplicate ages, if I was sorting by age, then it will also then go back and look at all the names to see if it can sort those into a better order. So this is pretty awesome. It can, it's, it's pretty, pretty flexible. So here we go, we add a bunch of objects, right? I call this one Ron, call this one Cat, call this one Bob. See that all works uh, nicely. And let's say though, for example, that uh, we change, I'll just change this one back for the sake of showing you that there's three exact duplicates, it shouldn't actually matter. But anyway, let's say I change this one to 41. Now you can see, because we pass in the second sort descriptor, once it sees that there's duplicates, it says, okay, I'm going to check to see if I can sort the ages, and it does that as well. So uh, then, it, as you can see, 40, 40, and then it puts the 41 after that. Now, what happens if I was sorting the ages for this? Well, the same sort of thing happens, right? As you can see, it sorts them all by age. So I have 40, 40, 40, 40. All those are the same number, but then it goes to look uh, so it's sorting all the ages, but then it looks at the other sort descriptor that it has, which is to sort them by name, case insensitively. And as you can see, they're sorted in order. And then, of course, uh, the first sort uh, part comes in, where I have my 41, and then I have my other object there. So that is how you implement sorting in Objective-C. And it's uh, pretty easy. There's really not much to it. Um, if you have any other questions other than this about sorting, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And uh, the next tutorial is going to be on uh, actually filtering values. So we're going to add a search bar into this and you'll be able to filter out different results in the NS table view. So look up or look up or stay around for uh, that tutorial and uh, that'll be like a continuation of this one. So keep this project because we're just going to be adding on to this project in the next tutorial. All right, and I will see all of you in lesson 44, or sorry, 45, this is 44. All right, see you then.